Welcome back everybody, this is Mr. Storm and this is part four of our text adventure tutorial. Um, you will notice that the text is a little bit larger. I, I had some complaints about the size of the text in the video, so I, I increased the text, the font size. So it's a little easier to see what we're doing here. Um, in this video, we are going to focus on adding pictures because uh, honestly, this is a little boring, right? So we want to make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to add some pictures to our uh, to our code. Now, this is when we start getting into the, into the design details, the things that are going to uh, set your game apart, um, things that are going to take a little bit more time to develop. Um, luckily for me, I've already uh, done all of that. So uh, I already have some pictures here that I am able to implement. You're going to probably want to build your own. Now, here's a couple of uh, tips. Um, first of all, you want to make sure your pictures are, um, you want to make sure your pictures are, uh, they all kind of keep the same theme. Uh, you want them to look roughly the same. So I've got my office picture here, freeway, uh, parking lot, you know, you want to make sure your pictures kind of keep the same uh, theme. They look about the same. And notice they are all exactly the same size. Um, when I made these pictures, I made them all the same size. And all I really did was I grabbed a stock photo or a photo from um, from Google that kind of represented what I want wanted the location to look like. And I dumped it into a, a photo imaging or photo editing software, uh, Pixlr or GIMP or whatever you want, Photoshop. And then I added a cool like night vision filter on every one, add some graininess, and then added the other elements that I needed for my game. Uh, so like uh, the mannequin here, or uh, I m made it look like the door was open on the freezer, added the desk and stuff like that. Um, so I just added some elements to it. But I have my pictures, they are ready to go. Um, now the other thing I wanna check is I wanna check to see what the resolution of these pictures is because I need to know um, what to set my image element as. So I'm gonna go to File Info, and my dimensions for this element uh, is 480 by 270. So 480 wide, 270 tall, which is what I need to know. So in here, in my image element, um, I am going to, actually I don't need the ID in the image element, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm going to set the source to be blank because we're going to change the source whenever uh, with our code. I'm going to set the width equal to 480, 40 pixels, and I'm going to set the height to, let's do uh, 270, 270 pixels. Okay, so our image element is set up to accept images now, and they're always going to be the same size, which is what we want. We want them to be the same exact size every time. Alrighty, uh, and then next what we want to do is we want to create an array that will hold the file name of that image element. So, actually, you know what, I'm just going to copy and paste because it's going to be basically the same thing as this. Actually, I'll just copy these first two lines. Um, copy. And we all know how to create an array at this point. Um, so, my array for images is going to just be called images and images zero is going to be office dot jpeg um, so I'm just giving it the file name uh, let's go back so I'm just giving it the file name it's office dot jpeg um, and that's all we need to do just so we'll just flesh out the rest of our array copy to oh that was not what I wanted but okay three four five six seven eight nine I wonder why it's inserting itself up there uh, anyway whatever doesn't really matter that's just weird okay so now we have one two three four five six seven eight nine nine different array indexes and we'll just indicate these are different and we'll do that and then we will just change the index based on the file name so just to make sure I get all the file names exactly correct I will look at them from here and I want to make sure that the index for the f 
the picture that is corresponding to the location name because that's how we're going to pull it up. So this is the supermarket. So I want market.jpg. Index two is the forest. So that's just forest.jpg. Uh, index three is the mall, mall.jpg. Index four is the fr oh, freeway.jpg. Index five will be suburb.jpg. Six is the parking lot, so it's just lot. Seven is going to be the movie theater, so theater. And then number eight is going to be the basement, basement.jpg. So now I have an array. Go ahead and make that bigger. Now I have the array which has images, file names for the images in each one, okay? Uh, pretty easy to do, um, nothing too complicated. We're not adding anything new or difficult on this. And then, uh, let's see, and then all we need to do is we need a reference to the image tag. Um, so let's do that down here. So right here, where we have our inputs and outputs and button and all that stuff, we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it image. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I called that images and this is image, so that's fine. Um, they won't, I won't have any mismatch, mismatches there. So we'll have image and then document dot query so, oh, selector. And I'm going to tie it to the image element. And just like I did with the button down here, where I tied it to the actual button element instead of the the um, the ID. So, because uh, this is the only picture I'm going to have on the screen for this version of the game. If you were making something like Dead Wrong, where pretty much everything is an image element, you're going to want to um, indicate each image element with an ID. Oh, sorry, with an ID instead of... Um, just the image element itself. Alrighty, cool. So now we have that. Now we want in our render function, let's keep going down. We want in our render function, uh, we want to output, let's do this. Uh, we want to make sure, we got to put in a way for our game to output the uh, image element to, or the the, the right file name to the image element. So I'm going to do image dot src. So change the source of the image to um, actually just uh, images map location. And so what that will do is it will take uh, the map location variable and it will tie it to the images array pull out whatever picture that is, change the source of my image um, right here, source of my image variable, which is tied to the image element in my HTML. So we should, if we save it and cross our fingers and hope that everything works properly, when I refresh this, I should get a picture of the freeway. And I do. And now when I travel, I should be able to change the image. Movie theater, creepy basement, and keep going up. You know, I can go wherever I want, right? Now, see, this is, this is, uh, I mean, it's a very small thing we've just done, but it's huge in terms of making your game interesting and fun. So already we've made it look a whole lot better. Um, let me think, do I want to keep going on this video or do I want to, let's see. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and add some boundaries. Uh, so what we want to do, yeah, let's add some boundaries while we're here, um, just to kind of clean this up. So the way we want to do boundaries is we want to send a message to our player when they try to go somewhere they're not supposed to. And that message is going to be, um, you know, honestly, actually what I'll do, we can have a different message for every place you visit. Um, that's okay. Uh, 
but just for the sake of whatever, uh, I'm just going to, uh, well, let's talk about it. So if I wanted a different message for every, oh, if I wanted a different message for every place I am, I would just create an array and I would make that array called something like blocked path images or oh, sorry, blocked path messages. And in each index, I would have a message that was different for every map location. But for this, just for simplicity, I'm going to call, I'm just going to create a single variable called blocked path messages. And I mean, again, we can, we can make it an array later if we want to. Um, and I'm actually going to just set it to, you can't go that way. Okay, that's easy, easy, easy. Now, all we have to do is we have to change our action switch. If you remember here, we have this switch that's tied to our action. Uh, so if our player enters north, we change our index or we change, sorry, yeah, we change the, um, the value of our map location to a different number. And that number corresponds to an index in our map array. Um, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that if we try to go somewhere, um, if we try to go outside of the bounds of our array, like we try to go below zero or try to go above nine or eight, then um, it will say, hey, uh, you can't do that. So, and we want to also make sure that we can't go, um, say, east from the edge of the map and then end up on the other side, right? So we're going to build in some, um, some if statements here. So with our first array, uh, let's do it on our first array and then we'll just copy and paste and change things. So let's talk about the logic here. So if map location, because we want to, we want to check, it's all based on where you are, right? So if map location, let's take a look at our grid to kind of figure out the logic on this. So I want to keep from going north. So I should be able to go north from here, north from this row. But if it's this row, I don't want to be able to go north. And so all I have to do really to keep us from being able to go north from here is basically just say if map location is, you know, less than or equal to two, then we won't be able to go north, right? That's all we should have to do. So if... Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's reverse that. So if map location is greater than or equal to three, then we'll be able to do what we want. Else we're going to get that blocked pass blocked. Else we're going to get the blocked path message. So we're going to make, we're going to change our game message to our oh, blocked path messages. I think it was, let's make sure you always want to make sure your variables are what you thought they were. Yeah. Blocked path messages. I'm just going to copy and paste just to make it easy. So I won't have any surprises there. And then boom. And then I'm going to move my break from here down to here because we don't want it in there. Okay. So now we have a simple check to see if we're at or above three, we should be able to go north. Um, so that's pretty great. We're going to go ahead and copy and we will paste this down here and then we want to change it. So with south, let's go here. So south is just the opposite. If we are uh, at or below five, we want to be able to go south. Anything above that, we don't want to be able to travel south. So if we are, um, let's say, uh, let's just say less than six. So if we are at less than six, we should be able to move. And then I want to change this to a plus. Okay, south is done. Now east and west is a little more difficult. Um, so bear with me on this one. So let's, let's tackle East first. So with East, I want to be able to travel East. If I am in grids zero, 
one, three, four, six, and seven. I do not want to be able to travel east if I'm in two, five, or eight. Okay. Um, now I could just do a simple if check, but I don't want to do that. I, I want to use math. I want to show you a, a more elegant way to do this. So if I'm in two, five, or eight, I don't want to be able to move. So what I want to do is I want to use an operator called modulus. Now modulus, what it does is it divides two numbers and it returns the remainder, right? It ignores the whole number and it just returns the remainder on modulus. So let's take a look at for the example of eight, right? So eight modulus three is going to be two because three goes into eight twice and it's going to have a remainder of two. So the modulus operator of this is going to be two. Same thing with five. 5 modulus 3 is going to be 2 with a 2 remainder. Now, 2 gets a little bit more difficult, um, but essentially all you need to know is all of these values, if we modulus them by 3, will return 2. Okay? Um, this won't return 2, and this won't return 2. So that's all we need. If, if modulus 3 returns a 2 value, then we shouldn't be able to move east. So let's program that in. Um, so this is what it looks like. Let me go ahead and paste these. Okay. So with map location, modulus, oh, modulus three does not equal two, then we should be able to move east. And so what we're going to do is uh, plus equals one. Else we get the blocked path. And then west should be easy. Let's go back and take a look at west. So if I'm at 0, 3, or 6, I do not want to be able to move west. So let's think about it with modulus again. If I modulus this, I'm going to get a 0, right? 0 modulus 3 is 0. 3 divided by 3 doesn't have a remainder. 6 divided by 3 doesn't have a remainder. So I'm going to get a 0 modulus on this every time, right? Um, this, I will have some remainder. I will have some remainder, and I will have some remainder. These, again, I will have some remainder. So if I have a modulus that does not equal zero, then I should be able to move, because these will return zero. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I know it's kind of, uh, uh, I don't know. Whatever. Let's just do it. Just If, it, if you don't understand how it works, uh, maybe I'll do a, a video on modulus later. Um, but uh, just know that for the purposes of what we're doing right now, this will work. So if 3 does not equal 0. All right. And then we are going to uh, minus equals 1. Okay. So now that should work. Uh, now we should be able to block ourselves from moving if we don't know um, or if we can't go that way, if we don't want our player to go that way. So this video is kind of long. I, I, I try to slip that thing in in the end there uh, for blocking paths, but it took a little bit longer than I wanted to. I apologize. Thanks for sticking it out with me. Um, I'm just going to test to make sure that this actually works. So I'm going to try to go north. Oh, enter. And I'm going to try to go north again, and it should block my path. Good. All right, so that should be about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, stick around for the next video. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.